I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 74, the only five steps to become naturally thin for life. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. I am going to share with you today the only five steps you ever need to become naturally thin for life. One of the most challenging things for my clients in their naturally thin journey is when they reach this point in their mind where they question, can it really be this simple and easy? How have I not been doing this my whole life? I've used this example before, but I want to share it again here. As small children, even from our infancy, we know innately, intrinsically how to use our body's hunger and satiated cues to tell us when, what, and how much to eat. There are times my two little kids who are turning two and four this summer will sit down to a meal. Let's say it's steak, broccoli, and sweet potatoes, one of our favorites. They love all three of these foods. I have seen them both go to town on any one of those, steak, broccoli, or sweet potatoes. But here's what usually happens. We sit down, we have the meal, and we have the food one night, and one of them will be really into the steak and not so much the veggies. And then the other one will love the sweet potatoes and broccoli and not be into the steak too much. And then maybe two days later, we have leftovers and they flip flop. My daughter, who is super into the steak, is now all of a sudden not so into it, and she loves the broccoli and sweet potatoes. And my son now isn't so into the veggies and he loves the steak. This is because they have an intrinsic knowing of what their body wants. Even though they enjoy the taste of all of the food, there's times that they know that their body wants more of the broccoli or more of the sweet potatoes or more of the steak, and they know they don't have to get it all in one sitting. Our bodies are designed to tell us when we are hungry, which is the cue for, hey, this is the optimal time for me to eat. Our bodies are designed to tell us when we are satisfied and to know what feels good and what doesn't feel good, whether it's quantity or type of food or a particular food that doesn't sit right. I eat some food that I don't regularly eat when I'm pregnant because I listen to my body. And one of the foods that I love to eat when I'm pregnant that isn't something I usually eat is oatmeal with some chocolate chips especially in the beginning when I'm pregnant and absolutely nothing sounds good and I know I need to eat a little bit, otherwise I'm going to feel even more nauseous. Oatmeal and chocolate chips seems to do the trick. My son, who is almost four, will often eat some when he sees me eating it. He'll ask for a couple of bites, but he won't finish or eat much because he knows his body won't feel comfortable. I don't even have to tell him that. And my daughter, who is almost two, doesn't eat it at all. Like It's fascinating, right? They eat oatmeal on a regular basis, but she won't even eat it with chocolate and he won't eat as much if there's chocolate in it because his body knows. Your body knows too. We just overcomplicate the crap out of being naturally thin with all of the stuff we hear and the diets we try. And it really truly is as simple as listening to your hunger, eating food that serves you and listening to the signals for when your body is satisfied, not full, but comfortable and satisfied and light and airy and energized and all of that amazing feeling we want to feel in our body. But when I teach women how to be naturally thin, eating when you are hungry, eating food that serves you and listening to your body to know when you are satisfied, That is only two of the five steps I'm going to walk you through. The reason for that is because it really is intuitive and your body really does know. But first, you need to declutter all of the other crap in your mind that gets in the way. So I'm going to start today with the three steps that make listening to your body become easier and easier. 
That first step is learning how to let emotions pass through your body. There is an actual step-by-step process to doing this. This is often the one thing that when women really understand and practice that their weight loss journey takes off like a rocket because it is the most common barrier to losing weight. Remember, your body's desire for food is not the same as your brain's desire for food if you're overeating. If you ask yourself, and truly believe your body wants to be at a smaller weight, then what that means is your brain has an over desire for food compared to your body's desire for food. Your body in and of itself does not want to eat when you aren't hungry. It's why it's not sending you hunger cues. Your body in and of itself doesn't want to eat food that has you feeling uncomfortable, either in type or quantity. Your body doesn't want to eat past the point of being satisfied. Your body doesn't want to feel weighed down and heavy and bloated and constipated and exhausted from eating. So if your body itself doesn't want any of this, then what does? Your brain does. And why does your brain want this? Because your brain believes the food is a really good distraction and it thinks it's a distraction from an uncomfortable experience, which always goes back to an emotion. Your brain interprets discomfort always from an emotional experience. If you haven't listened to the episode on physical hunger versus emotional hunger, go back and listen to that episode as well. That's episode 55. You don't have to go back right now, but just go back to that episode if you haven't listened to it yet. So if your brain has an over desire for food compared to your body's desire for food, and the only reason that happens is because your brain is searching for a distraction from an emotion, then learning how to let emotions pass through your body is the key to unlocking weight loss without willpower. I know I believed this for most of my life, that emotions, first of all, are weak, even though, right, successful, ambitious, determined, energized, focused, all emotions I love, by the way, and not weak, no emotion really is weak. But what I really learned was not only that emotions are weak, but that they are something to be avoided, that I don't have time for these things. So I believed, like I know many of you have learned to believe, that you have two options when it comes to emotions. You can either ignore your emotion or react to it. So let's say you're feeling pissed. And if your only options are ignore or react, you can either bottle it up and ruminate in your mind, that's ignoring it, bottling it up, or yell back or take action from being pissed neither of which are great options. So then if you're pissed or frustrated or stressed or you're feeling pressure all day and your only options are ignore or react and you don't want to react, then that means all I get to do is bottle it up. And so then of course the food sounds like a great release at the end of the day or when you're going through a really uncomfortable experience. But when you learn the skill of allowing and really letting emotions pass through you, you have a third option. You learn how to feel in control and calm with any emotion. Now, this doesn't mean I love feeling pissed and I'm like, can't wait to feel pissed today, right? It makes it sound like I feel pissed all the time, which I don't. But when I do, I'm not like, oh, yay, this is my favorite. But I can feel pissed with calm. And guess what? feeling pissed with calm, letting pissed pass through me, not bottling it up, not ignoring it or reacting to it, but really that third option of letting it pass through my body, that does not lead to overeating because my brain doesn't need a distraction from anything because it's passing through my body. It's not sitting there like in a pressure cooker, getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I'm like, I mean, we just should probably eat something. When you feel in control and calm with any emotion, because you know how to let that emotion pass through your body, you lose your brain's over desire to eat. And then your brain's desire to eat, when it doesn't have that over desire to eat, it matches your body's desire to eat. This step alone will change everything in your weight loss journey and in your life. I used to have what I would call quite intense anxiety, 
And because I only knew how to either ignore it or react to it, I would either ignore it, which really is like putting it in that pressure cooker, and it would become so intense, it would manifest in physical symptoms. Like I would have facial tics where at one point I just kept opening and closing my mouth, opening and closing my mouth. I just like needed to distract myself from the anxiety that was just like building and building and building in my body. I would also then eat to try to distract myself. I would have other physical symptoms like painful muscle cramps in my legs. So if that was one option, ignore it, bottle it up, have some really uncomfortable physical symptoms or react to it, I would sometimes react to it and I would usually get pretty angry. So I was actually in some anger management as a kid. I didn't know there was a third option of letting anxiety be in my body without fighting it without ignoring it, without reacting to it, but letting it actually pass through me. Now, when I feel anxious, it literally passes through my body with a sense of calm. Of all of the tools I have learned along my own naturally thin journey, this is the one that has changed my entire life. So when people tell me they want to lose weight, I think this is the most fun journey to be on because all of these skills you learn as a part of the process. So even though now I am naturally thin, I don't spend a whole lot of time and effort and energy thinking about food and hunger and stopping when I'm satisfied. I still have the byproduct. I still have the skill of letting any emotion pass through my body with a sense of calm. And I get to take that skill with me for the rest of my life. It is so powerful and freeing because then when you really feel like I can handle and be with any emotion and I don't need food to distract myself, I know how to let it pass through my body, you can listen to your body and your brain and your body are no longer battling each other. That is step one. Learning to let emotions pass through you. And this is what happens when you experience that intense urge to eat or that quote unquote craving, even though your body isn't hungry, that quote unquote craving is coming from an urge to eat. And that urge is an emotion. If your body isn't hungry, it's an emotion always. So then when you have this impeccable tool to use in the moment of the intensity of a quote unquote craving, which is really just your brain wanting a distraction from an emotion because your body's not hungry, that emotion, that urge, that craving literally passes through your body. You don't have to white knuckle your way through. You don't have to power your way through and you don't feel like you have to give in to it. It literally passes. And here's the best part. For my logical analytical brain, there's an actual step-by-step process to learning how to let emotions pass through your body. I teach it to you in the Naturally Thin for Life program. There's a series of questions you ask yourself. There's a series of tools that you use, and it starts to become just something your brain will do automatically. So now if I experience an uncomfortable emotion, my brain just knows how to let it pass through me. It's remarkable. All right. So that's step number one. Maybe I should just stop there. Step number one is so good. I just like could talk about it all day. But let's talk about step number two. Step number two is learning to evaluate objectively. You already know how to do this in a lot of other areas. Performance reviews for employees, looking over financial data, both personally or professionally, looking at stats. But then you sort of lose that skill with your weight. Your weight and the scale becomes this heavy thing that either makes or breaks your day or your week or your month. But when you learn to evaluate objectively, you learn how to stop making the scale mean anything about you as a person. My clients in Naturally Thin for Life tell me all the time, I love the scale. (laughs) Not because they're attached to it, actually because they're unattached to it, that's why they love it, but because they love using it as data. There is a mindset shift that happens when the scale becomes just data. Another part of evaluating objectively is learning to let yourself acknowledge your own progress. For all of you ambitious, pressure-loving, overthinking brains, you struggle with celebrating your own success. (laughs) I hear you. My brain struggles with this too. And you struggle with celebrating your own success and your progress because you're always focused on the next thing, the next goal. 
But when you stop and really see what is working and what's becoming easy for you, you enjoy the process of losing weight. Not just the end goal of weight loss, but the actual process of losing weight in a way that you never worry about going backwards. And then when you see all of your progress, which is not just about the number on the scale, but maybe you felt hunger for the first time, or you felt quite an intense hunger because you were so focused on a project at work, you kind of lost track of your hunger and then you noticed you were like super hungry, but you didn't become ravenous and overeat. You felt really calm and in control and you ate and you were like, whoa, I never really have done that before. Or maybe you let your stress emotion pass through you and you felt really calm on the other side for the first time. And that was a new experience. From all of those wins along the way, then from there, you can easily focus on one to three changes at a time. When your brain sees progress first, and from that progress, there you decide to make a change. When you go to implement that change, it isn't with all the pressure and rush and urgency. It's much calmer and calmer changes actually produce faster results because they are permanent. So the third step is aligning your thoughts with the behavior and the action you want with intention. I will use the words behavior and action interchangeably here, but really aligning and matching your thoughts in your brain with the behavior you want in order to lose weight is intertwined with all of the other steps I teach. But this is something I teach my clients deliberately as a separate step because there is, again, (laughs) I don't know if you've noticed, I really like processes because there is a step-by-step process to doing this. So first, when you think about aligning and really matching the thoughts, the sentences in your brain with the action you want to take, I want to use a simple example, and I want to use the example of brushing your teeth. You take the action of brushing your teeth, and you don't need willpower or accountability to do it. Because the thoughts in your brain match the behavior of brushing your teeth. You might have thoughts like, I want fresh breath. I don't want cavities. I actually like brushing my teeth. My mouth feels so good when I'm done. It doesn't take that long. So the way your brain thinks about brushing your teeth matches the behavior of brushing your teeth. Hence, no willpower, no support group, no accountability needed. But if instead your brain had thoughts which are just sentences in your mind that you've been practicing either consciously or unconsciously, if instead those thoughts were, I hate brushing my teeth, there's no benefit, this feels icky, I don't want to do this. If you had those sentences going through your mind, then when you got to the end of the day or the morning when you brush your teeth, you would need willpower and accountability because your thoughts don't align with the action you want to take, which is brushing your teeth. And how we know we can change our thoughts is because many of us have thoughts that don't align with brushing our teeth as little kids. Same with showering, maybe as little kids. But they change, and now it is easy for you to brush your teeth without much effort. And ironically, it's the same with eating. You used to have thoughts that aligned with eating when you were hungry, eating foods that felt good in your body, and stopping when your body was satisfied when you were a little kid. But they've just changed as an adult. When the thoughts in your brain are aligned with your body's desire to feel light and energized and comfortable, then the way you think about food and hunger and eating has you behaving in a way that you feel light and energized and comfortable in your body. And you don't need willpower or external accountability. And that means then you easily eat when you are hungry, you stop when you are satisfied, and you eat food that serves you. And that allows you to lose weight because when you eat when you are hungry, stop when you are satisfied, with that light, energized, comfortable, airy feeling in your body, you will inevitably lose weight. And again, I really like step-by-step processes. So within this step of aligning the way that your brain thinks about your body and food and hunger with the behavior you want, there is a sub process to implementing this. The first part of that sub process is using deliberate tools to identify what are the specific thoughts in your brain that conflict with eating when you are hungry, that conflict with eating until you're satisfied, and that conflict with eating food that serves you. 
You must first be aware of what those exact sentences in your brain are that make it difficult to eat when you're hungry, eat food that serves you, stop when you're satisfied. And when you learn how to let emotion pass through you, this step of becoming aware of what are the exact sentences in my brain that make it difficult for me to lose weight becomes so much easier because you aren't battling your emotions. (laughs) So you're so much more open and willing and aware of exactly what's happening in your own brain because you're not trying to escape yourself. So once you become aware of the exact thoughts, the sentences in your brain that lead you to overeating in the first place, then from that awareness, you can actually change them. Most of the thoughts in your brain related to hunger and food and your body are there without your deliberate intention. They arrived from outside influences you sort of unconsciously picked up while you were dieting, or maybe you learned as a child or listening to other people. Most of us have never questioned them or challenged them because we've never even been aware that they're there in the first place. And so there are deliberate tools to flush them out so that you can see exactly why I don't want to wait until I'm hungry. Why do I want to keep eating past the point of being satisfied? These three steps, and especially learning to let emotions pass through you and uncovering the exact thoughts in your brain that make it difficult to eat when you're hungry, eat food that serves you, and stop when you are satisfied, those two steps in particular, really all of this, but really a letting emotions pass through me and understanding exactly the sentences in my brain that made it difficult for me to lose weight, those were missing from everything else I ever tried. Now, because your brain is unique, there are common patterns I do see in all of my clients, but only you will know the exact thoughts in your own brain because it's your brain. So in my Naturally Thin for Life program, I teach you the tools to uncover your specific thoughts that make losing weight hard. And then from that awareness, you can change them to thoughts you want. You get to decide how you want to think about hunger so that your brain's relationship with hunger makes it easy for you to only want to eat when you are hungry. That relationship with hunger is the collection of thoughts in your brain that you choose to think about hunger. And you can change those thoughts deliberately after you become aware of the thoughts that don't serve you in your relationship with hunger first. And then when you choose thoughts that you want that make your relationship with hunger easy, you don't have to think about it after that anymore. The same is true for your relationship with your body when you're eating, when you're exercising, when you're getting dressed, when you see yourself in the mirror or when you want to stop eating. When you learn the tools to understand your own thoughts, the sentences in your brain and how to change them on purpose to align with and make the behavior you want easy, that is when you stop needing willpower. Becoming naturally thin is innate when the thoughts in your brain are on board with your naturally thin behavior. For most of the women I help, they typically have this experience around 90 days in, where they are losing weight along the way. And around 90 days, they say something like, oh, I get it. Like, I see that this is just who I am for the rest of my life, because now I know how to really listen to my body. I know how I want to think about hunger, how I want to think about food, how I want to think about eating only until I'm satisfied. They tell me I see that what remains constant is how my brain thinks about when, what and how much to eat, not by obsessing about particular foods. The only reason you ever need willpower or accountability is just because your brain isn't on board. Get your brain on board. Willpower is no longer needed. Just like you don't need an accountability partner to brush your teeth, you don't need an accountability partner to become and stay naturally thin when your brain is there too. You learn within these five steps how to be accountable to yourself because you learn how to choose thoughts in your brain that you want that make it easy for you to eat when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied and eat food that feels comfortable and energizing and allows you to lose weight for your specific body. That is also how you lose the fear of the weight coming back on. So 
Step one, learning the skill of letting emotion pass through you. Step two, learning to evaluate objectively. And step three is learning how to change your thoughts intentionally to align with the behavior you want that allows you to stop even wanting the food when you aren't hungry, that allows you to stop even wanting to overeat. I could just stop there because when you learn those three skills, the next two almost happen without much effort at all. So I'm going to walk you through what they are. But I want you to think about step four and five are really just the natural byproduct of learning steps one through three. Step four is using your hunger and satiated signals from your body, getting to know what hunger feels like in your body and what's the optimal hunger level for you to eat at. And then on the flip side, learning how your body tells you when you're done and when your body's comfortable. Your body has these tools, these hunger and satiated tools. And so what you want to do is learn exactly how to use those tools for you to lose weight. So those first three steps are like opening the floodgates to making your hunger and satiated cues super obvious. When you aren't battling your emotions, when you're evaluating objectively and you understand your specific thoughts in your brain that make it difficult to eat when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied, It almost feels like these signals for hunger and satiated have been there the whole time. And you're like, wait, have they really been here, though? (laughs) People will tell me, like, I think my body's talking to me in a new way. And what I often tell them is, no, no, your body's been talking to you this whole time. But now it's like the floodgates are just open and it's like you are so receptive to hearing it. So your brain has just been muddied with the dieting and what you learned as a kid and what we learned in our society. And that's what you clear up in steps one through three. And so then when you think about your body's hunger and satiated signals, it's like they're just there. It's really obvious. And then it gets to become easy. The last step, step five, similar to step four, becomes quite easy after you learn one through three. And that is learning how to know what food serves you. Your body will tell you in a multitude of ways what food feels best in your specific body. Some foods feel heavy or gassy or like your stomach is swirling when you eat them. Some foods you eat, you'll feel energized and light and airy, or maybe you'll feel more grounded or warm. You learn the tools to identify which food serves your body. And that exact food may change over time. But the skill of listening to how your body tells you if the food serves you, that's what stays constant. So then you don't need to be attached to finding the quote unquote exact foods to eat or finding the quote unquote perfect food routine because you always know how your body talks to you in the ways that it tells you when, what, and how much to eat. And you are going to be eating different food a year from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. But when you learn and are really open to and your brain is so receptive to your body's hunger and satiated cues and listening to know what food serves your body, the type of food you eat can change and it doesn't matter because it's the skill of listening to your body that remains constant. I am going to leave you with one last thought. For those of you and I've been here before, for those of you that are afraid of trusting your body because you're used to strict diets like counting or intermittent fasting with really short eating windows or eating really low carb, you might be afraid of trusting your own body. But your body wants to be naturally thin. These five steps allow you to become naturally thin by actually honoring and listening to what your body already wants. If you are afraid of letting go of counting calories because you fear you might eat a pint of ice cream, you won't even want to eat a pint of ice cream because your body doesn't want that. Only your brain does. And all of these five steps are designed to get your brain on board with your body's desire to be naturally thin. Your body wants to be at the optimal, energized, light feeling weight. And because that is what your body wants, it will tell you the fastest way to get there. You cannot outthink, override, overanalyze your way to the path that your body will take to becoming naturally thin. 
when you recognize that your body wants to be naturally thin and you know how to listen to it, it will reveal to you the quickest way there. So friends, are you ready to find your body's path to being naturally thin in only the way your body will tell you? Join me and Naturally Thin for Life, and I will teach you how to implement each of these five steps. Being naturally thin is the greatest gift I have ever given to myself because of the connection with my own body, the peace that comes with trusting myself, and being at a weight that just feels like I'm at home. I cannot wait to see you there. Come join me. Listen to the outro for more information on how to join. Have an amazing day, my friends, and I will talk with you all next week. Friends, if you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast, and I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. You will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.